down. We'll see what the president himself has to say. He's expected to officially make the announcement at 11.10 a.m. Eastern Time. Of course, CNN will carry that live. In other news this morning, student leaders at the University of Virginia are facing the media right now to address a rape scandal that's um, rocking their campus. All fraternities and sororities at the school have been suspended following an explosive report in Rolling Stone magazine. A student told the magazine she was gang raped by seven men at a frat house two years ago over a three hour period. CNN's Joe Johns is in Charlottesville. Not one more. More protests over the weekend at the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity house. The scene of an alleged gang rape of a first-year student by seven men described in graphic detail in an article in Rolling Stone magazine. No one has been criminally charged in the incident, which allegedly took place about two years ago. The frat house was recently vandalized with anonymous writings, including the words UVA Center for Rape Studies. In the continuing campus uproar, UVA's president took heat for her initial response that was called tepid by some, though she did call on local police to investigate. Then, decisive action over the weekend, including suspending activities of all UVA's fraternities for the rest of the year. She showed outrage in a written statement. Rape is an abhorrent crime that has no place in the world, let alone on the campuses and grounds of our nation's colleges and universities. The school says last year, 38 students went to the dean of students to talk about sexual assault allegations. Nine filed complaints. No UVA student has been expelled for sexual misconduct in the last decade. A friend of the accuser in the alleged gang rape telling CNN, the attention to this issue is welcome news. Absolutely. And for as vulnerable as she's probably feeling, I'm sure she's also feeling very liberated. And I know that all survivors here are feeling almost that, that same feeling of, yes, finally, this is happening and this is big. It's not just a UVA problem. 88 colleges and universities, including Harvard and Ohio State, are under investigation by the U.S. Department of Education for the way they handle sexual assault allegations. One disturbing question... All right, that was Joe Johns reporting. I'm sorry about that. Before I get to you, Mr. Um, Fobert, he's in a former assistant dean at UVA. He's now a professor at Oklahoma State. I'm going to ask you questions in just a second, but the students are addressing the media on the campus of UVA right now about the sexual assaults on campus, and they want to make it clear it's not just a UVA problem. It's a problem nationwide. Let's listen is the amount of people that have reached out to us in the advocacy community who have not been involved before uh, and have said, what can I do? How can I help? People who want to know how they can help in their daily lives and through other advocacy and activist, activism uh, outlets, how they can really get involved in this issue. So, so that's been something that's been very encouraging. But at the same time, tell me about the you. There has been a bit of backlash. We've even seen it. While we've been on campus, you know, people saying, oh, they shouldn't be here, and there's been posts online saying, this is hyperbolic, we don't believe this story. What has the reaction been of, of the fraternities? Are people angry about this? And do people believe it when it first came out? Did you believe it? Absolutely. I, first and foremost, I was inspired and really empowered by the fraternity community and, and my personal response to just the admiration that was shown to these survivors who came forward with such a difficult story and to share it in, in, in such a public manner as to put this issue into the spotlight. You know, one of the things that, that we talk about, this group behind me, because we've met quite frequently over the last year since we uh, ascended, uh, since we uh, first were put into leadership in our organizations, one of the things that we talk about is that you know, a lot of the students are really doing great work behind this and care deeply across organizations behind this. One of the issues that we've had is galvanizing individual change. So we want a collective community change and how we get that is by empowering every individual to get behind this issue and think about how they themselves can, like Ashley was saying, uh, foster better environments for survivors, uh, be promoters of bystander intervention to, to uh, uh, prevent sexual violence from occurring. The details of this case are, are quite frankly, shocking. And if you Absolutely. believe them, you know, if, if this wasn't shocking enough to you to think maybe this isn't true, if this is something you believe right away, 
Can you talk to the point where how the culture at these frats has gotten to the point where this is a possibility, this is something that you all seem to believe could actually happen at one of these parties? How has that happened? Well, I, I think that, you know, when I first read Rolling Stone, when I first heard about the article, it made me angry more than anything. It made me, it made me sad that this could happen in a community that we all value so so highly. It was it was disorienting. But I think that what we're trying to do is harness this energy, harness this this shock and this frustration into positive movement going forward, developing more sustainable and long term actions. And I think Brian said it really, really well in his statement. You know, this story will fade from the news cycle in one or two days, but this story will not fade. This energy will not and cannot fade from UVA, from the students, from the administration moving forward. I think it's imperative that we harness it and make positive steps to eliminating the problem of rape in our university community. All right, the students at UVA expressing their concerns over this article in Rolling Stone. With me, Doe, John Fobert, a former assistant dean at UVA. He's now a professor at Oklahoma State University. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Carol. Thank you for having uh, me. Thanks for being here. The, the article in Rolling Stone was so chilling because um, the woman, you know, the, the article is about this woman named Jackie. She was a freshman at UVA. She had a date with an upperclassman and a fraternity brother, and, and it seemed so planned. The fraternity brother, like, brought her on this date, brought her to this fraternity party, and then, um, and then brought her up to a darkened room, and she alleges seven men were in that darkened room, and this person that she had the date with was directing the action, so to speak. It, it, it's just, it was such a chilling story, and it's hard to believe that sort of thing goes on at fraternity houses at UVA. Well, it, it, it goes on in fraternity houses at UVA, but it also goes on uh, at all the other 4,500 colleges throughout the United States. I think this particular case, though, um, is an egregious one, um, and I frankly don't find it too surprising. But, you know, when, when we put all of the emphasis on one incident or one perpetrator, Bill Cosby or whomever, um, it it takes us away from the issue that you know five percent of women on college campuses every year experience rape one in four college women have experienced rape at some point in their lifetime so this isn't just a one campus issue a one person issue it's something that's national and i'm i'm actually pleased to hear uh, so much coverage of the issue in general because that awareness can be a springboard hopefully to some research-based prevention I hope so. so. So the president at UVA suspended all fraternities. Will that make a difference? That, um, from my own personal perspective, that's really an insult to the survivors of sexual violence at UVA. What that essentially does, if you think about this time of year, that suspends their operations for the one week between Thanksgiving and finals. So it, it, it looks like um, a big move, but in reality it says don't have parties for a week. Um, I, I really find it insulting. I, I think there needs to be much more serious change on this issue, and it doesn't come with just shutting down for a week and, oh, by the way, over the holidays when no one else is around. Yeah. Also, the Charlottesville Police Department is supposedly investigating this alleged gang rape that was detailed in the Rolling Stone article. UVA is urging witnesses to come forward. Does UVA really think those witnesses will come forward? Nobody knows where they are right now. Well, I, I, I certainly don't know what UVA thinks and, and whether they think the witnesses will come forward, but I think certainly with so many different women who have shared their stories of sexual violence that have happened in the recent past or the far past, they may be much more likely to come forward because there's a big barrier out there uh, to reporting it all, and, and that is that they won't be believed or it won't make a difference. Well, it might this time. I can't say it will, but we can certainly hope. One of the most disturbing uh, revelations in my mind in that article, the victim's friend seemed clueless about what just happened to her. She's standing there in a bloody dress. Yes. She's very upset. And um, the Rolling Stone is calling this woman Jackie. One of Jackie's friends told yes. her, quote, she's going to be the girl who cried rape and will never be allowed into a frat party again. It's just like boggles the mind that that would be the response. Well, it, it boggles the mind when you're thinking logically about this and when you think that we live in a just world, but the, 
unfortunately we don't and so um, those are common reactions of friends and that just points to why so many uh, women and men who experience sexual violence don't report and that it really points to an opportunity for culture change and one of the things that we do with my nonprofit organization one in four is to apply research-based practices in order to prevent uh, not only sexual violence from happening but galvanizing communities to help uh, encourage bystander intervention better responses by friends after this has happened so we can work to solving this problem John Fober thanks so much for your insight much appreciated you're very welcome I'll be right back.